Okay, how are you guys doing? Good morning, okay, and we're gonna carry on on application of n roots of a complex number. Okay, I must say that this question that you're about to see are, is rated as one of the more difficult ones. So if you don't have a good grasp of the previous concept on the n roots of a complex number, I hope that you revise that again. This is a very big problem. It appears very small, but there's a lot of parts to it, and it appears in the AMC 12, so if you think you are intellectually challenged, let's see whether you can handle this one. Okay, Z6 is equal to minus 64. And the question goes is that we want to find the product of the solutions to, to Z here or the, or the solutions of Z whose real part, which is A, is more than zero. Okay, you catch that again? Okay. Basically, we want to find the solutions to this question because we know that Z will have six solutions. Hopefully, you know that by now. And we want to take the solutions, find the ones which A is more than zero and multiply them together. A lot of parts of the question, but we can break it down very easily. Okay, first common mistake, I believe, that you are tempted to use this formula over here. Right? Okay, and then W I is equals to R1 over N. Da, 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 da. Now let's just look at it carefully, okay? I mean, even though if you're not tempted to use this formula, let's really see whether you, you understand the meaning of the N roots. Because I made a mistake myself, so I really want to correct you if you make this mistake. Now this is the formula that we have, or at least the formula that I taught you. Z is a given complex number and is equals to W to the power of N because later we want to find the nth roots of Z. So we bring the N over the other side. So we are finding W, W equals to this over here. Okay? Now this is pretty much to understand. Z is the given complex number and then we take the N roots of that. However, now let's just look at this equation over here. Okay? Just give a minute to look at it. Now, is this Z the same as this z over here? Okay, remember, this case, z is the given complex number and we want to find the n roots of that, so the roots would be w. But for this case, let's just look about it. It seems to me that z is not the given complex number, okay? And that is what makes this question a bit more difficult because the given complex number is minus 64. Can you see that? W here is the equivalent to Z over here. N is equal to 6. So the question twists it a bit by giving a complex number, complex number minus 64, which happens to be a real number. That is the first mistake people might make. Z is not the given complex number. Minus 64 is the given complex number. So now, I need to try to find a way to write this in polar form, which is the second difficult thing to do. Okay, now, there's a lot of ways to think about it. What we want to try to do is that we know that Z... Okay, so now, since Z is this, I'll substitute this as W, okay? So W is equals to minus 64. Okay, however, there's a missing I component over here. Now, if we write it in standard form, it doesn't... It doesn't if we write it in standard form, it doesn't matter because i is zero, so we can just leave that out. However, we really need to find this number in polar form because we need the magnitude r and we need the argument w. Okay? So there's a few ways you can go about doing it, but I would really like to match it up with a graph because I find that it's really helpful in understanding what is going on. So we got the real plane and we got the imaginary plane. So minus 64 is all the way over here. Am I Correct? Okay? So what's the argument? Well, if there's a complex number over here, one way to travel is to go all the way over like that, see? So the argument is pi, and it's as easy as that. So r is equals to minus 64, and the argument is pi. Sorry, r is the magnitude, so r is the magnitude of w, which is this complex number over here. So r is equals to 64, and the argument of w is equals to pi. So now we are scrolling because we can write Z6 is equals to 64 and in polar form, cosine, the theta value in this case would be pi plus I psi pi. There we go. So far, so good. Okay, so 
Now, this is the complex number that we have, and we want to take the nth roots of this complex number. In doing so, the solution would be z. So, apply our formula, z is equals to r, which is 64, to the power of 1 over 6, right? And it's cosine theta first, so it will be pi plus 2k pi divided by n, which is 6, likewise for sine. Go and read the section if you don't really understand what I'm talking about. Okay, this is just simply applying the formula. Theta plus 2k pi divided by n. So, remember what we want? We want the solutions which a is more than 0. Okay, now, there are two ways to do this. And I'm going to split the video in half. So, you got to look at this way and later you can check out the other one. Which I really like it. It's really much more pleasant and much more beautiful as what we say. So you got this formula over here, and you know that k is equal to 0, 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1, so it's 5. So what you can do is that you can put values of k inside here, churn out all the solutions, and find the ones which a is more than 0, and you multiply them together. Such as, z1 is equal to, z2 is equal to 2i, z3 is equal to minus 3, root 3 plus i, z4 is equal to minus root 3 plus minus root 3 minus i, and z5 is equal to minus, sorry, root 3 minus i, over here like that. Now, I'm not a very a master in arithmetic, I really worked out the problem, that's why I can write all these out. But if you really want, if you really need to work it out, you put 0 inside here, you add a 2, divide by 6, you get the value, and then you do likewise for all the same. And then you get the values for the cosine and the sine, and then you can times this inside here. A bit of a trouble, which I like to say that that's why this method I don't quite like. But you get the problem anyways, if you pull through. So, from here, a more than 1, we got 1 over here, and 1 over here. So, the answer is z1 times z5 is equals to root 3 plus i times root 3 minus i. Okay, now here's where things get a little bit dicey because this needs to multiply with this, this needs to multiply with this, this needs to multiply with this, this multiply needs to multiply with this, or you can use the formula, or if you're smart enough, you will write this multiplied by this, which is 3, then you got this multiplied by this, which is minus, i squared is minus, so times together plus 1 equals to 4, and that is the answer. Mistake number two or mistake number three, if you manage to go from here to here, mistake number three is that you multiply this wrongly. So you better be careful of that. And so the answer is four. And let me just have a quick check. And yes, the answer is four. I'm correct. Okay, and that is how we solve it. Like I said, perhaps the, the hardest way or the biggest obstacle is really recognizing that this is the complex number. I can't stress that more enough. That because if you try to compare this with this, okay, you will immediately have a problem. I make the same mistake once, so I, I really hope that you do not make the same mistake. This is the given complex number, like how this is the given complex number. And this W is the solutions, but in this case, Z is the solutions. I guess the people at, at uh, is it a a a n a a Mathematics Association of America really found a way to twist things a bit? At least now you know that you can untwist them. Recognizing that this is the given complex number, this is the solutions. Write the formula down. Find put in the values of k. We get all this, and we get the answer over here because down here a is more than zero. Stay tuned for the much better solution.